And we're back with Sir Brennus, and he is at the Pit of Agony. So as I was saying, um, if we look at the pit, the pit of Agony, test strength, 13. So what he's going to have to do is, and Sir Brennus is very good with strength, so we're gonna, we would consult his hero card. And depending on what, you know, heroes can go up to level 3. So let's just say, I want to say I think his strength is 2, starting out at level 1. So we would take the D20 and roll it. So let's say that he rolled 11. Well, consulting the entry there, it says 13. Now, of course, with 11, he would fail. However, you add his strength attribute, which is plus two. If he rolled 11, he would have 13. So he, he would cross the pit of agony and be unscathed. He would go to the other side. And that's where the green arrows come in. See the green arrows here? When you are, when a hero is successful, they you go to the other side and you put them on that square. Very simple. However, let's say that he rolled a five. Even with adding two, that would only be seven. He would have to go into the pit of agony and get pierced by spikes. And real simply, on a fail, the hero loses their grip, falls into the trench, and lands on the spikes. You will roll a one d4. The result is damage taken. So that's how the environmental hazards work. So I said, guys, I'm going to tell you something. This is a deadly dungeon. I love tough, challenging games. My favorite game... Let's get let's get Sir Brennus out of the pit of agony. I don't want him to bleed anymore. Okay, I feel better now. So, um, one of my favorite games of all times is the 80s Dungeon Quest. I love that game. So, in homage to that, it's probably as deadly as that dungeon. But a different, you know, a different theme. It's played completely differently. Um, before we leave this little demo, here's the Sanctuary of Bats. And here you have to test your hide. You know, how well you can conceal yourself. You know, hide and be quiet. And that's, to me, that's what, you know, the hide attribute is for a hero. But there's these bloodthirsty carrion bats. And so let's get Sir Brennus again. And he, you know, if we're going to, he's going to go over here and... Again, when he hits one of these red markers, he'd have to get the D20 and roll and test the hide. And the interesting thing is if he fails, you roll a D3. The result is how many carrion bats bite him. And so, and for every carrion bat that bites him, he loses one health and one, um, one essence. So that is just a very short demo of how the environmental hazards work. I love this dungeon board. I love tough, challenging things. And so there you go. So there is a little bit of that. So I think we're going to be closing out the Tomb of Kaladar. And um, it's just a very unique dungeon board. And you set it up just a little bit differently. Um, wait, we'll jump back in here for a quick second. Hopefully you're enjoying seeing all this. Um, you see up here, it's got that weird perspective. But this is the Labyrinth of Solitude. And I need my trusty pen thing here. Um, remember, the, if you remember from our other videos, this is these little um, sigils on the floor here. Sigils, sigils. This is where you put trap tokens. So when a hero lands on it, you have to, of course, flip the trap token over to see if it's a trap or not, then draw a trap card. But what I did was to entice would-be adventurers, there's two treasure chests here hidden in the Labyrinth of Solitude. So if you brave, you know, you know, if, you, if you're brave enough, your hero is brave enough, you can go in here and recover possibly some treasure. But remember, risk and reward with treasure chest. I think we just talked about that. You never know what's going to happen. Also, see this chamber right here, the Labyrinth of Solitude. And let's shoot back over here. Okay, even, and add even more to this. I'm telling you guys, you can hear how much I love making this dungeon board. Here's a Labyrinth of Solitude. Every time it's set up, you have to put a mystery chamber in there. You never know what's going to happen with the mystery chamber. I've never revealed that, and I'm not going to. It's a very cool little, you know, reach in the bag, pull out a token kind of thing. So when you go in here... And notice, this is the only dungeon that has two doors in it. All the rest have only one. So you could, you know, you could either go, when you start out, you could either go try the Pit of Agony to get through the Tomb of Kaladar. You could try to go through the Labyrinth of Solitude, or do you brave the Sanctuary of Bats? 
Are you seeing how tough this dungeon is? I love it. I absolutely love it. So the thing is, when you go into Labyrinth of Solitude, you have to see, you know, what's, what's in there. You'll never know. So that is a little demo, a very micro demo of the Tomb of Kaladar. Okay, so now we're going to close it out. Now we're going to go on to probably the, the most coolest thing, and I know I've talked about this a lot, the Avalon Adventure board game. So first of all, because I forgot to mention this before, if you have not seen this game, there's a demo I did of it on the company's YouTube channel. So just search it up. Look in the videos. It's there. Um, here's the thing about this game. I absolutely love Choose Your Own Adventures. I, I can't get enough of them. Remember the old like fighting fantasy books? All that kind of stuff. I love it. So what I, this was my chance to take that genre up, but do something different for people and really put a lot of creativity and ingenuity into it. The, the, the Avalon Adventure board game, I wrote 259 unique adventures or, or encounters and events just for this game. And we're going to take a look at the board. This is the game board for it. Um, what you do is you can play this before playing Dungeon Crusade. And what the heroes have to do is, let's go up here to Hope's Reach. Notice how everything, the, I um, sectioned off the map in all these different like territories. You start up here in Hope's Reach. And what they have to do is, I'm not going to get too much into it, but every game, there's, there, there's these things called the Runes of Eternity. There's a green Rune of Eternity, and there's kind of a yellow one or tan one, and then there's a red one. Notice the red zones. So every game that you play... And I love replayability. The, the, the three runes, the green, yellow, and red one, will show up in their respective zones, but in different locations. However, it's not just so simple just to go into, like, you know, if it's here, you get it. There is two fake runes for every real one. So in, like, the green zone, there's going to be two fake ones and one green one. And a, the real rune of eternity the only way to find out, you have to go there and flip that token over. You have to have the event or, you know, encounter there, and then you flip that token over. I absolutely loved, I'm most proud of this game, I think. This, and I think people are going to love this. And so, you know, everything that you see in Avalon right now, I got thematic for everything in it. Every, every location, the, the Cavern of Lost Souls, the Vile Tower, oh, the Vile Tower. Watch out for, look out for the basement floor and floor three. It's not fun. Um, Hunter's Watch, the village of Hunter's Watch, Black Nether Dungeon, the Witch House, Mistvale, all of the Lair of Aben, that's another dangerous place. But there's good stuff. But just know that all of the stuff, like what, you're gonna pull an adventure card and then you roll a D12, see up here? When you go into an unexplored area, you pull, you have your, car, your adventure cards up here. Let me get my marker. I already have it. So you have the adventure cards there. When you explore it, you have to, you know, you pull the card, you roll the die, and you see what happens. And there's an equal amount of bad things and good things in a neutral outcome. So the, the, the beauty of this is, is the replayability. You will never see the same game in this game again. Like, you know, you will never play the same one. I've, I've loved playtesting this game. I absolutely loved it. Every time, even if I took the same, if I you know, went to Dungeon of Isto, then I went to Ancient Runes, then I went to Witherbrick Forest East, then I went visited the Maidens and the Tower of Maidens, it changed every game. You'll never see the same game. So um, this is a little bit of the Avalon Adventure board game. And so we're going to get into that right now. But um, and we'll, uh, will we talk about the Fate Track? So that's going to be a little bit to get into. It's an easy mechanic. It's basically if a hero perishes, there's an angel that will revive or resurrect your hero. However, if the angel does that, you have to put a token on the fate track. If it ever gets to the skull, you know what happens. Um, so there you go. That's, that's the game board for uh, the, the Avalon Adventure board game. Okay, I'm going to get to the 10-minute mark. I'm going to be right back with our next part. Again, I hope you're enjoying this. I'll talk to you in a few.